I'm in London. <laughs> I am here for a YouTube event. Who am I? I don't know. Oh. I thought I would do like a little get ready with me Q&A video because I've been meaning to do a Q&A for a really long time and I thought what better time than today. Before we begin, I got some ramens. Oh my god. <laughs> These some nice chopsticks. Okay, here is my broth. Noodles, I'm guessing. <gasps> wow. Look at that. This is chili tofu. I have no idea what the rest is. Honestly, I was just hungry and I was kind of in a hurry, so I just ordered from the first place. This cost me nine pounds, which I feel like is pretty good. I'm in Soho. Ooh, first things first, I have to try the, the tofu. Mmm, it's silken and it's got like a crunchy chili thing on the edge. The thing is, there's literally catering at the event I'm going to, but I'm in London for such a short time that I really just wanted to make the most of it and eat a lot. <laughs> I know a lot of people travel for like museums or sightseeing. I care about the food and I'm going to be eating as much as possible before I go, so. Okay, I'm back. I have all my questions on my computer. I have 27 pages and each page has eight questions, which is... 216 questions? I don't know if that was right. Whenever I watch Q&As, they kind of go through the questions beforehand and pick a few to make it kind of coherent and in order. I was going to do that, but then I didn't. We're just going through them randomly. <laughs> I have some concealer on. I need to leave in about 40 minutes so i guess i'll start with one of the most common questions which is just how am i doing recently i'm okay i definitely struggle a bit more in the winter i feel like that is a really common occurrence and when you first learn about seasonal depression it kind of comes to you and you're like oh my god everything makes so much sense <laughs> I just find it really easy to feel down in the winter and because I've been working a lot recently I definitely have been prioritizing that over my self-care which I know is really bad but I think it's really easy as well when you're starting a new job to like want to impress everyone and do your best job and I put that pressure on myself to perform, no one else did and because of that I've just kind of been sleeping less and stressing out more but I'm kind of trusting that with time I will figure out how to balance life. I don't want any one part of my life to absolutely consume me and that especially goes for working. I want to make sure that I'm nurturing other aspects of my life as well. Like the other day I was talking with my friend Lily and she was saying how she's baking and I was thinking I've not baked in months and I used to do it every week and it was my favourite little self care thing and I'd bake my grandparents stuff and go visit them and then recently I've just not been doing that. I didn't even notice when I stopped that, I just slowly drifted away from it which is sad because it is absolutely something that brings me joy that is why i wanted to start painting again because i thought you know it's a good way to focus on myself and trying to reignite some <laughs> passion for art and creating things like that so yeah i'm okay definitely go through tough patches every here and there like everyone, I think I am just very, very emotional. Or perhaps sensitive is the better word. I get really strong emotions a lot and over the years I've kind of figured out how to cope with them but it is definitely difficult to deal with at times. I feel very isolated and like I'm not like other people but I know that's not true. I know we're all going through our things. You know, I never conceal my acne scars, but it actually worked really well. Then again, I don't have any natural light, but I'm blessed that it's dark outside right now, so <laughs> I suppose it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use the light from my computer to check how it's going. <laughs> Another one I get really often is what is my MBTI. I am an INFP, so introverted feeling something something <laughs> have you found a writer that thinks just like you 
If so, who? I haven't been reading that much, but I'm really trying to get back into it. And one of the writers I really did love when I was reading a lot was Mieko Kawakami. And I recommend literally any of her books. They are all wonderful and just relating to the characters so much on a deeply personal level. After spending so long thinking that I was weird or not like anyone else and then reading these books and seeing myself portrayed in them, it was amazing. How do you deal with anxiety? Honestly, recently I haven't been dealing with it at all. I've been letting it get the best of me and obviously I want to stop that, but I think I need to go back to therapy to be honest. I can feel myself almost regressing and I know that's not the most positive way to see it. I know we're always moving forward, but I do see myself getting stuck in some of my old ways that were a bit alarming and I don't want to fall into those forever. So from therapy, I do remember a few things and just a lot of self-soothing mechanisms like I look wild right now because I've not blended out my blush <laughs> but going like this and tapping it's like soothing I always like massage like my shoulders and stuff like just close my eyes and breathe and do that and then also just naming things you can see, smell, touch, feel, hear just to ground yourself those are what I mostly remember that's what I learned in my trauma therapy that I went to because a lot of people who have trauma often feel transported almost to the past and feel as if they're not in the current moment and those are all methods you can use to kind of bring yourself back to the present and they do work if you're feeling particularly anxious or anything else. I've also really been enjoying taking baths recently, putting the candle on, getting in the bath and just like floating. <laughs> Like, it's really nice. <laughs> try and look after yourself, try and be kind to yourself, and if you notice the situation is making you feel worse, then take a note of that and don't avoid it because that way it won't get better, but you know, if you're having a hard day, maybe you shouldn't do that thing. Or you can identify what makes you feel good and what makes you feel bad, and I think it can help you better understand yourself, even if you don't quite understand why those things make you feel that way. The beginning steps is to just feel Figure out what does what. How was your experience when you had to leave your family to go to university alone in your first year? Honestly, I've always felt a bit bad because I am not the sentimental kind. I don't really miss people and I don't get upset when I have to leave them. And so when my parents dropped me off at university, I just said bye and they went and that was it. <laughs> I think I'm not meant to be that way. I think I isolate myself a lot and I've just gotten used to being alone. We can always improve things we already have. And so I'm trying to do that in all aspects of my life and try and understand other people's emotions as well. Like when my parents were getting teary eyed leaving me at university and I was very abrupt and I was like, why are you crying? And now I kind of look back at that and I cringe a bit because I wasn't very thoughtful or understanding. And I think when you spend a long time feeling really depressed, that is just something that happens. You kind of stop taking emotions seriously because they're so heavy and <laughs> I think it kind of stopped me being able to connect with people for a time because I was so involved in my own mind and my own feelings. I didn't have any time to think about anyone else and it didn't feel selfish and it's not selfish but at the time I just didn't think about anyone because I just felt so bad. I, I couldn't possibly spend any energy on other people's feelings or thoughts because I just didn't have it in me even to look after myself, so... <sighs> you only realise that afterwards, so... and you kind of see perhaps the way you were hurting the people around you, so... Do you ever deal with bad or disturbed body image? And I get that a lot. Questions about eating habits, stuff like that, the gym, body dysmorphia and stuff, so... I think... The world we live in right now makes it so easy to feel like you're not enough and I have definitely spent a long time <laughs> picking myself apart in the mirror and thinking of all the things I change but I think when I was diagnosed with chronic illness and I realised that my pain was never going to go away I started seeing my body in a different way 
not just in the negative way of like, you betrayed me, but also in the way of you give me so much, even though I've not been respecting you. And I think that's really encouraged me to eat healthily, start going to the personal trainer, all those things. And because I realized that my body is already working harder than most people's and I'm not being grateful, I'm not thanking it, I'm not doing things that are good for my body. I think there was this audio on Instagram or TikTok or something, and it was an older woman talking about you shouldn't waste your life wishing you were smaller or looked different because your body is like your vessel, it's your home and it takes you everywhere, it does all these things for you and if you can't just appreciate it for how it is, it's really sad. <laughs> I'm definitely not the most eloquent person, but I am trying to get my thoughts across well, so I hope it's working. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea if I blended in my blusher enough. We'll see when I take some photos this evening with a photographer, and if I'm very red, well, now we know. What was the best and worst thing about your time in university, and do you have any advice? I think university made me grow a lot and I definitely realised quite early on that I wasn't enjoying my subject which is quite unfortunate to spend a lot of time and money on something and then realising you don't want to do it but I kind of had always felt that pressure to succeed even though nobody was actually really placing that pressure on me I was kind of just doing it to myself I didn't really let myself do what I wanted and I always thought what should I do not what do I want to do so my first point of advice for university would be please don't feel pressured or get stuck in doing something you don't want. There is that sunk cost fallacy and also of time and finance where if you've already spent money on something or spent a year doing something you feel more encouraged to finish it which is completely understandable but perhaps if you're only at the beginning or you're not yet in university and you realise like I don't really think I want to do this then don't. It takes a lot of courage to admit that something's not for you when a lot of people around you are doing it but I think you'll be better off in the future doing what you need. So yeah, don't go to university just because everyone else is and make sure you actually want to study what you're going to and can see yourself working in a job from that subject. That being said, I definitely did learn a lot from university completely unrelated to my subject. It does help you prepare for, you know, getting a job, being an adult, and it is a good way to shift into adulthood without feeling like overwhelmed because everyone around you is experiencing the same feelings and you're in an environment where you can meet people and kind of expand your mindset a bit. You can hear about all these different people's lives and stuff. University, I've still not fully formed my opinion on it, to be honest. I don't know. Do I regret going at all? Would I do it again with a different subject, blah blah blah, I don't know. That is one of the things maybe I need to stop avoiding thinking about. How is it to be an adult? I'm 17 and I'm scared. <laughs> Um, honestly, and while this may not be true, I feel as though I've not really mentally matured since I was very young and maybe that is like a mentally ill thing where you kind of get stuck or you feel like you've had to grow up faster than everyone else because of all the things you're struggling with but I always kind of thought to myself, once I'm an adult, I'll like know how to do things and I'd look at my parents or older people and I think wow they must like have all these weird thoughts in their head like so mature and different and understand no that's not a thing everybody stays the same and then you realize you are the exact same person you were before you turned 18 or whatever and you just have to figure things out and everyone's kind of just stumbling over each other and trying to do the right thing and no one knows what's going on I'm sorry if that made you even more scared, but um, my sentiment is that don't be worried that you are behind other people or not grown up enough or don't know what's going on because literally everyone is in the same boat and we're all going through the same stuff and it will literally be fine. You will be so fine, okay? I believe in you. You can do it. <laughs> Will you come to Japan when you're free? Yes, I am coming to Japan. <laughs> Not until next year, but I'm booking the flights very soon. I'm also going to be going to Australia and Singapore. Maybe I'll go to a few other countries nearby. I thought when I'm there, I might as well make the most of the cheaper flights and go around a bit. So, <laughs> so exciting.
Do you have a big regret? I think with that question, the first thing that comes to mind for me is being so harsh on myself, especially as a teenager or even now. I have these insane standards that I hold myself to and it makes life so much more difficult. And that is not like a regret from the past, that is a regret I have every day, but I'm not really at the point where I'm strong enough to stop doing it yet. I'm kind of aware of my negative self-beliefs and my negative self-practices, but I'm not yet at the point where I can put a stop to them. So that is my big regret, not being kind to myself the way I would other people, not respecting myself the way I would other people, pretty much just treating myself badly. And I don't deserve that, you know? I didn't do anything wrong, so I need to get past that, that is a goal maybe next year. <laughs> and I also regret putting things off and saying I'll do them next year instead of working on them right now. A lot of people are also really confused about what my actual job is or how I got into it. So I edit videos and I make my own videos. I don't really make enough income to support myself living alone or moving out. So I'm very grateful that I can live at home while I do this. But basically I do freelance video editing. People send me their footage and I edit it however they want <laughs> and then that helps me develop my skills for my own videos which you watch here. YouTube is definitely a really good source of income if you have a lot of sponsors but it's not constant and it's not that reliable. It's difficult to get job security when doing this sort of thing so I'm trying to be frugal. Initially I didn't actually want to go to this event because I wanted to save money instead but I kind of thought to myself I might never ever be invited to a fancy YouTube event ever again in my life and I might as well just go and I'm having a wonderful time. I think I've been so stressed recently that having some time just in a fancy city, all alone. You know, I've only been to London once before and I didn't stay over, so this is very exciting for t to me. <laughs> and I actually got started with video editing because somebody saw my videos and messaged me on Instagram to say, will you edit mine? And after that, I kept doing it and working with different people. So <laughs> that's how it started. I didn't really try to start, it just kind of found me. So how much do you spend on coffee shops each month? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> That's another thing I used to try and be really frugal about and never buy coffee or nice drinks when I was out, but then I realized like, if this little thing can bring me immense joy, then why not? <laughs> what is your circle of friends like? Um, honestly, I'm not very outgoing and all through university, I made no effort to make friends mainly because I wasn't going to any lectures and I also do not drink alcohol. So it was a bit difficult to connect with people my age, <laughs> but also I just had no interest in meeting people and making friends. So I think from university, I have three friends, one of which I didn't even meet in university. She just lived in my building. So yeah, <laughs> I have a few friends from school when I was younger. Um, I honestly don't see anyone very often, but I am very introverted, like you know, if you watch my videos, and it doesn't really bother me. I'd rather be alone than have to pretend while I'm around other people, because I spent a long time doing that, and it's exhausting. <laughs> I'm actually running late now because I spent so long talking, but I think I'm gonna actually continue this when I get home later, it'll be late, so I don't know how coherent I'll be, but I feel like I want to keep answering questions. I'll show you what I'm wearing as well. I have this little dress on. It's so cute. It's not too short. I love the sleeves. They've got little bows on them. Very cute. And I'm wearing these boots, which are also really cool. <sighs> and I'm taking my, my Paloma wool bag. Okay, I'm going. I'm gonna do a London vlog as well tomorrow. So I'll probably film this for that, but I'll be back. <laughs> Is it socially acceptable to go downstairs like this? I don't know, but I'm doing it anyway. Hello, I'm back in my room. It's 1.29 a.m. I've not had any water today, so I went to buy this and it cost four pounds and it's not even cold. Like, but you know when you're really dehydrated and water tastes like the most amazing thing on earth? <laughs> ah, oh my God, I feel better now. 
I got back from the event like three hours ago, but I called my boyfriend to talk to him about my day and then I actually got a little bit sad. I think I just got overwhelmed and I literally cried for like 10 seconds and then <laughs> my food takeaway arrived and so I had to go back downstairs and I just stopped crying and then after that I was okay again but I had so much fun today but I think that it's really easy for me to get overwhelmed and I'm just not used to being so social and also I'm really not used to there just being so many people after being in Wales for like a solid almost six months now. It's obviously just a very busy city and that's why I really love this hotel room because it's so well insulated there are no windows which is kind of weird at first but actually it feels quite good in here I thought I'd answer a few more questions is the newsletter going to be back? if you didn't know I have a website and on my website you can subscribe to my newsletter where I was sharing journal prompts and like weekly updates and yes I do plan on starting doing that again the reason I stopped is just because I got really busy and I wasn't doing any journaling and I really felt like I had absolutely nothing worth sharing like I was having no thoughts at all and what was I gonna write? I didn't want to just send out like a really boring emails every week. There's also a lot of people asking about like getting bad grades or coping with university or school stress and I would just say just like take a deep breath and try to just view it from a different perspective. I know this feels like your whole world right now but in a few years, a few months, a few weeks even it won't be and I know I used to always hear people say to like put yourself and your mental health first but I didn't really like apply it because I was like yeah but other things are more important and I was like Phew. but like literally no <laughs> nothing is more important than your health so you really need to focus on that before something happens and it makes you realize that your health is all you have at the end of the day and if you're not healthy it affects every part of your life okay so think of the grand scheme of things i know your grades maybe will affect your future but we always end up where we need to be and I don't think I would change anything that's happened for me even if I knew the other options or like could go back I would do the same because I am always doing my best you know doing your best doesn't mean you're working really hard every day it means that you are doing everything you can while still looking after yourself and you're trying your best it doesn't mean you're like in the library 10 hours a day it could mean you go for 20 minutes and then decide you know what i need to just relax and that's fine okay so just look after yourself i also had a few questions about my boyfriend so if it's not too personal how did you and your boyfriend meet we met in school we met in biology <laughs> and what is the age gap between you and your boyfriend and i think it's like five months and two weeks so it's not a lot. The next ones are about like making YouTube videos and vlogs and editing so I want to make a more in-depth video about how I actually edit my videos because I get a lot of DMs and I know maybe most of my viewers wouldn't be interested in watching that but if it can help a few people I would like to do it and share some ideas I have or like tips and stuff so just scratching the surface here guide to a good vlog and then in brackets new to content creation i think there are a lot of things i could say like oh have an intro this song have a catchy title use this type of music make it this long in my opinion what makes a good vlog is you being yourself and it doesn't matter how good your camera is or your editing or any of that stuff if you're not really being honest and filming what you want to film and giving the message that you want to get across then what's the point i feel like the best vlog are made by people that are really enjoying making them and you need to be into it and enjoying it so just don't put too much pressure on you learn so much just by trying instead of thinking and planning ahead just do it and you'll learn so fast and you'll probably look back on your videos in like a month even and cringe because you've learned so much but that is a good thing that's not a bad thing okay so just try and see what happens. Could you please share how you started editing and filming? Was it hard to film yourself or your activities? Yes, I always knew I wanted to do YouTube because when I grew up, I was obsessed 
with YouTube and I'd watch it hours and hours every day and I always fantasised about it being my job and I know like statistics now they're always like the dream job of a child is to be a YouTuber but this was like 10 years ago when I was literally like 11 years old and I had my own channel <laughs> but um it was in my second year of university I realised like I don't know anyone around here I don't have to see people from school anymore I'm not with my family so there's nobody really to be embarrassed about finding my channel because like no one's gonna notice me doing it so they won't know to look and the first video I made I felt so awkward for a long time I filmed on my iPhone 8 but I was actually posting on a different channel before I came to this one and so the first video on this channel isn't actually like my first video technically my first video was made when I was like 10 years old but I did feel awkward I didn't know how to talk to the camera and I remember even when I was younger wanting to transition to like sit down videos and I remember putting on this pink hat and this red flannel t-shirt and like sitting on my bed like this and staring into the camera and trying to talk like this and be all animated even though I'm like not at all like that and I remember doing so many takes I was using my dad's like Canon DSLR like photography camera and the video was not great you could hear it just focusing the whole time because I wasn't using a microphone <laughs> It was just harsh, but like I said earlier, the best thing to do is just try, so just go for it. And regarding starting editing, because I did YouTube when I was younger, I kind of already knew how to use editing software. I'd used Sony Vegas Pro and I'd used Final Cut Pro a little bit as well. And then when I started making videos in my second year of university, I used my student discount to buy Apple like Pro apps bundle. It was like £200, I think, and you get all the special apps and the licenses to them and so I had Final Cut Pro and I just spent so much time on it and it's like some of the settings when you download it are so messed up <laughs> like the background rendering which basically means your laptop is always going to be slow while you're editing and stuff like that so I would recommend watching some videos if you're not familiar with editing it can be kind of like a steep learning curve if you're only interested in making quite simple videos you could edit on your phone or you could use iMovie you don't really have to have all these fancy things if you're making goals you just like to put something out you know I just find it really fun to experiment with different fonts and transitions and ooh. <laughs> Would you recommend to someone who wants to start YouTube a Handycam or iPhone Pro? I would probably recommend an iPhone Pro because it's a lot more versatile and it's very light. It's your phone, you'll take it with you anyway so it doesn't change anything and it definitely makes filming your everyday life much smoother. Sometimes now that I've got a camera and I don't want to use my iPhone, which I'm using now, this whole video and my vlog tomorrow will be on my iPhone because I just didn't want to have to carry around the camera in London. I find that because I have a camera now, I don't want to use the iPhone as much because I don't want to like lessen the quality. But although the lighting is very bad and I'm recording on my front camera, it's still okay right now it's a little bit grainy but it kind of adds to like the sleepover vibe you know and that camera on the newer iphones is absolutely amazing the only reason i got my sony camera is because i wanted a little bit more you know depth to it but the colors on the iphone are so vivid and like i said it's literally going to be your phone as well so you're going to get a lot of use out of it you know if you decide you don't like filming then what are you going to do with your camera i recommend getting a new phone instead of a camera if you want to start YouTube. Also, people keep asking me if I'm engaged because I always wear a ring, but I don't even know what finger the engagement ring goes on and I don't want to get married. <laughs> so I know I'm not engaged. <laughs> what is my favorite song at the moment? Not a song, but an album. I've been loving the new Troy Sivan album. It's so good. I listen to what I'm editing when I dance so good gets the mood up <laughs> in the times you fell out of your habits or routines how did you get back into it i struggle with this because i kind of feel like i'm always up and down and i don't fully understand how to regulate my emotions i understand my emotions much more but i don't understand how to control them and maybe they're not something that needs to be controlled but just to be like honored but sometimes i feel like it's just impractical when i want to do stuff but i can't rely on myself to be ready for it when the time comes and even yesterday i almost didn't come on this trip because i felt anxious and tired and i just wanted a break but how 
could I have even thought that this wouldn't be about a break? And I'm here and it's so good, you know? I don't really have an answer for this question, but I'll just say like, be kind to yourself and also be strict. Like if you know you deserve something, you should go for it. And if you know something needs to be done, even though you're feeling a bit like lazy or tired or just exhausted, try your best, you know? I think lower your expectations for yourself, slowly start implementing these habits back into your daily life and after a while you won't even notice it happening but they become habits and not just like tasks for you to do. Do you prefer living in a big city like Liverpool or a smaller city with less people? I don't think it's the size of the city that I care about, I think it's more so how close to nature you are. But saying that, the grass is always greener on the other side and when I was in Liverpool, I would always think to myself, oh, I can't wait till I'm home in Wales and I can go for swims and see the trees and be in the grass. And then when I'm home in Wales, I don't do any of that stuff and I just think about, oh, I miss Liverpool where there's all these coffee shops and places to go and museums and everything. I just think somewhere in the middle is perfect for me, but I don't know where that is yet. Okay, final question is, what are your future plans? Career, study, lifestyle, etc. I'm answering this one because I get it a lot as well and I honestly just don't know. And it's something I kind of avoid thinking about because if I do, I get a bit overwhelmed and my plans are just keep doing what I'm doing. If I don't want to do it anymore, then I won't. If I do, then I'll keep doing it and I just want to be happy and live life. So those are my thoughts. I am going to plan my day and go to bed because it is now 1.51 a.m. I really wish this water was cold. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. My London vlog. Maybe this one comes first. Maybe this one comes second. I don't know. Anyway, bye.